Hey everyone, I'm Fred Ranger and I hope you're doing good. I wanted to do a very quick video tonight because I am excited about an announcement that Fuji just made and I'm gonna explain to you why in a couple seconds. But I wanna preface this by saying that a lot of you are following my channel because I am a Fujifilm shooter. I would like to address though that I'm not a Fujifilm shooter, I am a storyteller, I am someone who likes to use the gear readily available to tell the best story I can. This is what you can see in my travel videos. This is also what you can see sometimes when I'm vlogging and also when I'm just filming stuff around and also taking photographs of what I'm most passionate about, which is beautiful destination, people, and ultimately just stuff that I want to capture so I don't forget about it and creating incredible memories. So that's the stuff that really excites me. So that doesn't make me a Fujifilm shooter. Uh, that makes me a storyteller that uses, you know, some cameras and some gear to tell my stories. I mean, some people are telling very interesting stories with cameras like this one, and this is a film camera, this is a Minolta, and this is the SRT-201, and some people are creating stellar stories with print that they're you know hanging on the wall or printing in a book uh, some other people use a fairly small camera like this one this is the Fujifilm X100T and if you think about Valerie Jardin that I really really like all of her travel photography all of her portrait photography everything she shoots is with this camera does that make her a Fujifilm shooter? Absolutely, because she uses Fujifilm gear. She is a Fujifilm X photographer. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You could give her a Sony 6500, a 6500, or a Lumix GH4, for that matter, and she would create awesome and beautiful stories. So I wanted to preface this video with this little comment because a lot of people are following, you know, YouTubers or camera reviewers just because they shoot one brand or they think they shoot one brand whereas I think people are choosing one brand because it's more convenient if you look at the cameras I have I mean this is an X Pro or sorry an X-T2 X-T3 wow the, cam the cameras <laughs> manufacturers I can't keep up with all those numbers this is the X-T3 and I really like it uh, but I was missing IBIS so bad that I ended up ordering an X-H1 again for my video work and yes that might means that I'm gonna get rid of the Sony gear that I'm actually filming on again I'm, I go back to the fact that it's easier to manage one system because and you know, if you think at the lens here for the Fujifilm it's all the same lens system so whether I have a Fujifilm X-T3 uh, an X-H1 or an X-E3 I will be able to interchange the lenses and my girlfriend also shoots X-T2 my old X-T2 that she now has and it's easier when we travel because it's a lighter backpack because we only have one camera system. So on to today's video. Fujifilm announced something very interesting. They announced the Fujifilm X-Pro3. And as you can see, I am a Fujifilm uh, enthusiast. I do have a lot of cameras from them. I also own some Sony gear, some vintage film cameras, and a lot of other cameras, but there's one digital camera that I really, really like shooting with, and that was the X-Pro2. Some other reviewers have mentioned that there is something unique about the rangefinder style camera, at least for them, and, and I wouldn't include myself in there. There is something unique about shooting a camera that, ins that inspires you. The X-T3, I really, really like it. Does it inspire me to shoot more? Maybe not. The X100F actually inspires me more uh, to go out and shoot and to shoot in the streets and when I travel and so on and so forth. So I always put that camera in my bag. But the beauty of the X-Pro line, the X-Pro2 and now soon to be the X-Pro3, is the fact that you can actually have the same feeling of a rangefinder camera style like this X100F and all the technology that they've put in the Fujifilm X-T3, which is the latest sensor, the 4K if you do video, all the sensor technology backlit, and the fact that it actually shoots pretty decently in low light for a crop sensor, and it has some very beautiful color rendition, micro contrast, and so on and so forth. 
Really like the technology here, but more inspired by the rangefinder style camera. So the X-Pro3, they decided to, I will use the word, I will say it, and maybe I'll get hate uh, in the comments down below, but they decided to innovate by going backward. And here's what I'm saying here. So they, they I'm gonna put a photo of the X-Pro3 design. This is not the final design. It was announced kind of in a live stream. Um, and they did show some prototype of the camera. They are close to releasing it, but it's not final. But at least you'll be able to see that they decided to go and remove the back LCD screen. And this is a very important move that they're making here. I think I understand why they're doing it. As I just mentioned, Fujifilm X-T3, latest and greatest. This has all the bells and whistle. It has the screen uh, tilting up, down, on the side. So this is a very capable camera, very practical camera, packed with features and so on. If you want to have a fast pace, you know, looking at the photo, adjusting and moving forward, I think this camera is definitely for you. But if you want a more analog and no chimping type of experience, then you might want to look at a film camera because, I mean, there's no chimping on this camera. This is the only thing you can see. It's kind of a bunch of numbers that helps you with the type of film that you have with the ISO sensibility. And that's what the Expert 2 is about. The Expert 2 is about slowing down. It's about, you know, looking at the frame and thinking about the photo you're about to make and not thinking about looking at it, taking another shot, making it a perfect shot and so on and so forth. I think what he wanted to do is that they wanted to make sure that there was a camera that was capable of doing all the bells and whistles that you hear about, specs and so on and so forth, and that's your X-T3. The X-Pro3 though, well what they did is that they did this little funky thing with the screen in the back. So there is a screen, but you have to tilt it down. So if you look on the X-T3, the screen actually tilts like that. And actually that's pretty similar to what you will find on the new X-T3, although, the screen doesn't go back like this, it actually goes backward and what you'll be able to see, and I'm gonna put some photos here, is the film simulation that you just decided to go with. So that tells me that Fujifilm wanted to make sure that there is a camera for photo shooters out there. The ones that wanna slow down, the ones that wanna make you know a little bit more intentional photography not having to look at the screen. You'll look at the photos when you get back, a little bit like when you had those you know, old cameras. This is a Pentax here. When you have those old film cameras, you would take the photos, go back home, and go to your dark room, although here I guess you'll go into your light room or your Capture One and your Luminar to look at the photos, but it slows down the process. I think I understand, again, what they're trying to do here is to of course, do an homage to all those old school film cameras, which are, you know, very interesting because they're built like tanks. They last long. They all they are all about making sure you understand what you have in the frame because you don't have 17,000 photos on a single card on 128 gigabyte cards. You actually have a roll of 24 or 36 frames that you need to carefully curate when you take a photo. So I think what, what they're doing here is that they wanted to pay homage to this type of photography that's kind of getting lost in this whole Instagram and shooting, do it for the gram type culture and all those selfies and so on and so forth. Yes, they could have done a screen that tilts up and down and all this great stuff. Although it does actually tilt down. But what I'm trying to say here is that Fujifilm is a camera company. It is not necessarily a computer company like other brands like Sony and Panasonic and so on and so forth, which ha also happens to make um, great cameras. But Fujifilm is all about film, which they all started about, and also the cameras now these days that helps you go back to intentional photography. If you follow this channel, you'll know that I actually made a video a couple, oh, that was a little bit more than a year ago, saying how I wanted to be, more, to be more intentional with my photography. And thinking about the X-Pro3, I think this is something that I might actually consider 
moving forward, I get to slow down and to get rid of the gear and get rid of the actual thinking about your settings and so on and so forth and just focus on the frame, on the story, on the image that you're about to make. I don't know if you agree with me, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of hate mail or hate comments uh, down below because uh, most of you guys actually think that this camera is crap, that Fuji is out of their mind, but don't forget, there are plenty of cameras. There's the 8 xh one that I actually ordered back. I'm so happy it's coming, I think tomorrow. I'll definitely make a video about the reasons why I got this camera back. Uh, but also the Fujifilm X100F if you want a fixed lens, very portable camera travel. The X-T3 for the bells and whistles, all the latest technology. The X-E3 and now there's a new vlogging camera that just came out. So I think it covers all the needs for everyone, but one that they wanted to make sure they address because they are a camera company. They wanted to make sure that the camera shooters, or sorry, the people who wanted to shoot with a camera that helps them slow down, focus on the frame, not the screen, see the film simulation they have in there because they are a film company uh, to the core and they like color and the color signs are very important to them. So the message is about how you're gonna use a certain film simulation to tell a story that's closer to what you wanted to say, to say it, to tell or to tell as a story. So for me, I think it's very positive. I think the X Pro Treat, I don't know if it'll sell, I don't know if people will laugh about it, who cares? I think the true photographers, when I say true photographers, it's not, I'm not being snobbish at all, I'm just saying, you know, not people that wanna snap a photo of a mountain and post it on Instagram. I'm talking about people who want to use photography as a way to express themselves, as a way to slow down, as a way to even heal and cure some of the inner battles that you're having. I think photography is a great way to disconnect, not look at your phone and just go in the landscape and enjoy the presence of being there. So I think it makes a, a good subject also for a podcast. I am actually reviving the podcast. If you haven't subscribed to the Visual Storytelling Podcast, go in the link down below, hit that subscribe button on this YouTube channel, but also on the Visual Storytelling Podcast. I have some very exciting guests that I'm try to finalize the, the, the date that we're gonna have a chat, but there's some very uh, impactful photographers, some meaningful photographers and videographers. So stay tuned for that. And are you gonna buy an X Pro Treat? Are you gonna laugh about the X Pro Treat, the new, the new one that's coming up? I wanna know all about it. Please leave, leave me a comment down below and please hit that bell notification and that like button so other people can actually, I don't know, if, a lot of, I don't know if I want a lot of people to hear that video because this is a very funky camera. I might get a, a tsunami of comments. But you know what? It's all good. Leave it down below. I've been Fred Ranger. Enjoy life. Be happy and enjoy your gear. Regardless if it's digital, analog, if it has a screen, no screen, just enjoy it. Cheers.